Hello, it's the Great Canadian Bagel here coming to you with the first update, first instance, first installment of the French 2022 presidential election forecast. So, uh, just as a disclaimer, I have not exactly worked out how I want to do the second round voting aggregate. So right now you're only going to get the first round in map form. Uh, later I will try to do the second round in map form as well. But that's for future installments of this when I figure out exactly how I want to calculate the second round because not every... there's the, just uh, the, the, the core issue is people's first round voting intentions are not a clear draw to second round and not enough polling data is presently available. There's only like one or two pollsters who ask people if so you are will publish sorry like person A is going to vote for Eric Zimmer in round one but if it's Marine Le Pen versus Emmanuel Macron he'll vote for blah or blah. Stuff like that. There's not a lot of good data for that yet and I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to calculate it but eventually it will be there and I will start throwing numbers. In the meantime uh, it's pretty likely that Macron would win round two versus Le Pen because as you can see here by this map just ignoring all these numbers down here that I have written there's only two colors on this map <laughs> there's only Le Pen and Macron and the core reason for that is uh, basically since 2017, pres uh, the 2017 presidential election, the traditional left in France has splintered a bit instead of rallying behind, or so far they have not rallied behind one candidate. In 2017, they rallied around Jean-Luc Mélenchon, probably pronouncing that name wrong. This time they have about three candidates. I've put Jean-Luc Mélenchon there in my my short list. I am keeping track of eight separate candidates. I just only have the five that are... The, the core is they have to be either double digits, percentage, and first, first round voting intentions. Or in the case of Jean-Luc Mélenchon, he is just the highest polling of the traditional left in France. And the traditional left add up to 25-30ish percent, depending on the poll. So it makes sense to have at least one of their members because I'm expecting they're going to rally behind somebody closer to the election. Oops, sorry about that. For now, though, it is unclear um, who that would be because, yes, they do, in fact, have like five or six candidates. Really, they only have three candidates. The um, Anne Hidalgo, Junoc, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and the Greens. Who the heck are... Sorry, I'm blanking on the name of the candidate. Uh, do, do, do. Bear with me. <laughs> ah, Yannick Jadot. Jadot. Anyways, I'm probably going to be butchering pronunciations in this series. My French is not this great. It's not particularly good. <laughs> I apologize to any French people who watch this in that regard. So that's kind of the, the lay of the land here. So what is it likely to see in this scenario? So we have, obviously we have Macron and Le Pen as the two core choices. My suspicion is as it, the election gets closer to the date, Either Zamor here is going to fade, or he is going to eclipse Le Pen. I don't see him sitting in the low digits range. Now, it, the reason be this is a lot of poll after, like most of the polls have like 60, 70 percent of Zamor's supporters are voted or would vote for Le Pen. And a lot of Le Pen supporters would vote for Zamor, so I think there might be, there will be some consolidation there. Right now, it looks like it's going to Le Pen. There was a big 
jump in excitement when Zamora's name was starting to be uh, tossed around in the media, but at this point, it looks like it's narrowing, it, it's going back to Le Pen. She does have the more, she does have an established party, she has more, probably more name recognition, though I'm not super up to date on which figures in France have a lot of name recognition, but at least she has more name recognition internationally, so I assume she will maintain preeminence of the right, the French right. Though, I will note, from a North American's perspective, that's a bad way to phrase that, uh, from an outside perspective, it does not really appear that there is meaningful left. Obviously, I said there's three left candidates who have decent support that I am tracking. But, like, Macron himself, who I think, who I would say in 2017 was a centrist in France, seems to have drifted more to the right in France, but not not because he's become more right. I think France itself has drifted more right from since 2017 between the Yellow Jackets protests and various terror attacks that have happened in France, the economic hardships that have happened, Brexit, all these things I think have had an impact on France and security is a very large issue going into this election, which has caused a lot of the core candidates to move, to start uh, making policies and talking about security grounds, which, while not inherently a right-wing topic, does tend to drift right-wing. When people are very concerned about national security, they tend to favor right-wing responses to it. It's not necessarily a truism, it is just the tendency I have observed. So, at this point, I would still technically say Macron is the center. He occupies about the center third of the French electorate. Maybe center... slightly center left, possibly, in France. But France as a whole has shifted to the right since 2017, and particularly since 2012. Which, in 2012, the Parti Socialiste was candidate... Um, what was his name? Bear with me a second. I need to double check. I'm bad at names. That's not the right document. Bad at names. Uh, Francois, Francois Holland was elected and he got about 52% of the vote. And I, whichever round, I'm not sure if it's our second round, but regardless of which round it was, it doesn't particularly matter. Since then, from a, fi a high 52%, no, that's uh, that's a bad way to phrase that, from 52% in 2012, the, the socialist left in France, which is really the core left, because you also have the Greens in there too, the left, what I would describe as left-wing in France, or even left-wing in Canada, frankly, I mean, they'd be very left-wing in Canada, but that's neither here nor there, they are only polling around 25-30% depending on the poll. So there's definitely been a big loss there. Now, some people might argue that there's demoralization in the base and the party splitting up makes it harder to rally people around. This could all very well be true. The voter apathy is quite high in the polling. Will that continue to election day in April? Remains to be seen. Now, there's really, I see three scenarios, three main scenarios here. What could happen? There's this one, which is the default, where it's Macron versus Le Pen, and everyone else is irrelevant, because no one else scores enough consolidation to meaningfully challenge second place. And in which case, if it goes into a runoff, or to the runoff, because I can't imagine at this point with this many parties on the field that anyone's going to get 50% in the first round, then I would assume Macron... I would forecast that Macron's going to win. Again, in the future, I will actually have statistics and data 
for this, not just my suspicion based on polls I've read and data I've looked through. But there is always the potential that if Le Pen runs a good campaign or Macron runs a bad campaign, that she could pull a win. I think the most recent poll had her at 46% of second round vote intention with, versus Macron. So that's only giving a Macron an eight-point lead, which is significant, but significantly less than the 33-point lead from 2017. I think that is the most likely scenario here going into the election, which will probably start heating up around February, maybe a bit earlier next year. The second most likely outcome I see is that Valerie Pecresi, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong again, so I apologize. And starts rallying towards, like, erodes a bit of Le Pen's, but more importantly, Macron's base. Doesn't get enough to win, or to get to the second round, but with the consolidation of the left parties behind Jean-Luc Mélenchon, or another candidate, they place first or second, with Le Pen as the other one, placing first and second. In which case you have, let's just go with Jean-Luc Mélenchon versus Le Pen in round two. I think in this case Le Pen wins because it just doesn't seem like France is in the appetite for a left-wing president right now. As I said, Macron, even Macron is, I would in Canadian politics, I would hazard, I would struggle to call him left wing based on the policy positions he's talked about, he's advocated, and he's done. He wouldn't be, I wouldn't call him particularly right wing in Canadian sense, but he's definitely not left wing. He's kind of like halfway between, like, he kind of, kind of like halfway between O'Toole and uh, Trudeau from what it seems. Though, socially, he's much more... I guess the better way to phrase it, he's socially much more conservative than... He's about as conservative socially, it seems, as O'Toole is in Canada. And he's a bit less economically conservative. A bit more fiscally liberal there, and more into things like green and euro and globalism. Or EU, stuff like that. So... I wouldn't call him right wing, but I definitely, or I wouldn't call him right. Yeah, he's like center right. I'm gonna call him stick with center right going forward, and I think I've justified myself with that <laughs> characterization. Pecresi is or Pecres? I'm I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry. She's like center right right. <laughs> it starts really getting the terms broken down here. Uh, she's definitely. I would say she's firmly right wing. We'll stick with that. Uh, Zamor, in a North American sense, is the most possible right wing, or not? Sorry, not the most possible. In the American sense, today is the most possible right wing, as the most possible right wing is extremely social conservative, and Zamor is probably the most social conservative candidate I've seen, based on the policies I've read about him and that he supports. He pretty much supports every single social conservative issue that you could say. Maybe these are not cur current policies, but the most recent ones I've seen when I was looking through this. He supported all of the most social conservative policies you can name. I would not call him very economically right, though. He's very skeptical of like pure free market solutions. I would not call him left wing, but he's like if you picture like a like an axis of negative 10 to 10 with negative 10 a super left like complete socialism and t 10 being complete free market I think I say he's like a 3 or a 4 so he's not the most right wing possible in that regard but he is very right wing I'll be really surprised if he can even place well in France maybe France's electorate as of all the reasons I've said, I said earlier, has shifted far enough to the right that he's potentially possible, but very unlikely. 
want to get back here because I'm getting a bit in the weeds. So it looks like to me that if it is Melancholin versus Le Pen in round two, it's almost certainly that Le Pen would win, which would be very interesting. Now, she's backed off on some of her more extreme, extreme, her more known issues, like the more things that you think about with her, like she's not necessarily going to straight up leave the, or pull a Frexit, a couple other things like that. Not as hostile to the EU, mostly. But does she govern like that? Does she change her mind? It's really hard to say. I don't think we'll ever really know there, unless she wins. Now, we get to the third outcome here. I think this is the least likely of the three. So in this outcome, Zamor... Procresi does better, and Zamor does quite well at the expense of Le Pen. So, in this, essentially in this regard, Procresi gets to around what... Uh, Francis Fillion had in 2017 around, I believe he had 20 percentage of the vote, but Le Pen and Zamor split their vote so that it's Pacresi versus Macron in round two. And in that regard, I would assume, I think that one in practice comes down to whether the Zamor uh, Le Pen base considers a meaningful difference between Pecresi and Macron. And if they do, and they actually go and vote in round two, whoever they think is closer to their goals will win. So it could it, it's very either or in this regard. Though, we will see as things flush out. So now just some housekeeping notes before I wrap up the end of this video. Uh, like my previous Canadian forecasts, I'm only going to be updating this, uh, publishing a video with updates, when either something interesting happens on this department map, or I prove my cal or I update the uh, algorithm so I have more details, like let's say I have round two data now, or I add more variables. And regarding that, if anyone has a knows where to find French stats statistics data based up for uh, education levels let me know I want to add that to the model but I can't find it so I can't use the demographic data if I cannot find how many people have what ed education levels like po all pollsters publish just like crazy that that data a lot so it would be very easily accessible data for me but I cannot use it because I don't have uh, numbers I don't think it might change I don't think it would change too too much but it might change a few de departments, like maybe some of these super marginal ones down here in uh, Occitania. Or Occitania? I guess Occitania for French. Uh, the other regard, because of YouTube reasons, I do have a video planned for the Canadian update as the as a first meaningful update since the Canadian election, but for YouTube reasons, I don't want to publish two videos today, so there'll be another video next week with that data or with the Canadian update. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, if you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe, comment what your thoughts are going to be. If you think there's uh, other candidates that might have a good chance here, because there's a whole heck of a lot in the field where you think uh, people are going to consolidate. If you think maybe Zamora has a chance, maybe Lamelon can have a chance, let me know. All these things are quite interesting. Otherwise, I hope you all have a good day.